Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now, here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Folks, we're going to have a powerful program. Now, you've heard a lot about zombies. You're saying, oh, no, seriously, a lot about zombies, this and zombie that, the zombie apocalypse. Well, I want to talk about the zombie awakening that's actually in the Bible. Now, you'll say, well, that, you know, look, Paul, when I, was, when I got saved, I was dead to sin and I become alive in Christ. And yeah, that's true. But no, there's actually going to be a resurrection of the damned. Well, we always talk about when the resurrection of the Lord comes, when the dead in Christ shall rise and shall be caught up forever to be with the Lord. And so shall we be with the Lord. And that's true. But what about the resurrection of the damned? When does that happen? Who are those people? Is that what Hollywood has been doing, glorifying the zombie apocalypse? I'll be right back with the zombie awakening. The zombie awakening. Even Jesus Christ realized there would be a resurrection of the saints, but what about the resurrection of the damned? Hollywood has done a lot of damage deceiving the world, but according to the Bible, from Daniel's prophecies to Jesus Christ, there will be a resurrection of the damned, the zombie awakening. Get this DVD series today. Are you serious? Are you serious? Well, it is very serious. Tell people about this broadcast right now, The Zombie Awakening. Well, the Bible does talk about a second resurrection. It's not one I plan on being a part of, but millions of people will. And I've often wondered what happens to the people that are on the planet when the dead in sin begin to rise from the graves. Now, it's one thing to think about the resurrection of the saints, Matter of fact, look what Jesus said. If you go to St. John's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 25, Jesus says in red lettering, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. And hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. But listen to the next verse, folks. But marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in that which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Now we picture what the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 when it says in verse 15. This is 1 Thessalonians 4:15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. In other words, we will not we will not hinder them from the resurrection. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together in with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So we understand that. We all say, yes, hallelujah. And I mean, I've heard the preachers preach, and my grandmother used to sing, there ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. I mean, and, and, I mean, I've, I've, because I begin to visualize the angels 
just in the sky and the, the voice of the trumpet of it and the sound of the trumpet and the voice of an archangel. And I can see the dead in Christ and you can see the, the earth coming out of the, the graves and out of the tombs, the saints of God coming out dressed in white robes, bursting from the sods and, and, and rising up. And us that are here that are saints will be then changed in a moment of a twinkling of an eye for caught up to be with the Lord. And so shall we be with the Lord. If you happen to be here during that hour, I'm saying. But what about the rest of the people who don't go up and the rest in the, the, of the graves that are not saved? Jesus says they're going to come out of the grave. And so Hollywood, get this, folks. Hollywood knows this scripture better than the Christians. Hollywood knows there's a resurrection of the damned, the zombie awakening. And what they're going to do, they've already started it. How many years now? How many TV series? How many movies? How many the, the day of the dead, the walking dead, the this and that? You got the zombie... What they're doing is they're glorifying, they're glorifying the resurrection of the damned. But can you imagine being here as a sinner, not saved, and watching the saints come out of the grave, seeing the disappearance of millions of people, the chaos, the carnage, the confusion, the craziness, and then graves are opening, more graves, but these guys crawling out are the graves of the people who have died in sin, who do not have a glorified body like unto Christ, who begin to crawl out of the tombs with the bodies decayed in sin and corruptible. You know, the Bible says in, in, the, in the book of Corinthians, it says, that we're going to put, this corruptible is going to put on incorruption. This mortal is going to put on immortality. For I'm going to be sown in weakness, but I'm going to be raised in power. The saints know this. The church knows this. And Satan knows that there's a resurrection of the damned. Now you say, Pastor, this is so far-fetched. You have lost your mind. No, I'm quoting scripture to you. Matter of fact, let's just see how ugly it will get. Daniel even brought it up. Daniel in chapter 12 said these words in verse 1. He said, and, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble. What? A time of trouble such as never was on and never was since there was a nation even to the same time. And at that time, my people shall be delivered and every one that shall be found written in the book. The book of Revelation refers to it as the book of life. What happens then, pastor? Look at verse two. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake the awakening, some to the everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So Daniel says this, you ain't seen nothing yet. You wait till Michael stands up. You wait till the sound of an archangel shout and the sound of the last trump of God. You wait till the saints come out of the grave. Wait till you see what is a time of trouble like never has been on the earth. And I promise you, there will be nothing ever. Hollywood, nobody can even comprehend The saints leaving, the graves bursting open, God's people gone, and and now we're thinking about the rest of the people on the earth who haven't died and seen the bodies and seen the the damned crawling from the tombs. And you know what? Uh, It it just blows my mind. But in reality, I think some of you might need to know this because this might uh, might be, you might be living in that time if you don't get saved. I don't know. If you don't get saved, if you're living, you're gonna see it. If you're dead, you'll be a part of it. So you might want to know something about it. Or you can change your destiny. Oh, nobody wants to hear this message. I see right now. You was looking for some, if you're looking for the powdered puff message, I didn't have it today. I was trying to find it. But really, what I'm telling you is the good news. You, You don't have to be a part of any of that. You don't have to be a part of any of that. That isn't God's plan for you or for me or for anyone else. God wants you to be blessed and he wants you to be saved. He doesn't want you to even think about this unthinkable thing, but it truly is. And for some of you watching right now, you're saying, Pastor Beckley, I didn't know that that was even in the Bible. Matter of fact, this blows my mind. Go with me to Jeremiah chapter 19, verse 9. Jeremiah says, you know, 
I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters. They shall eat every one the flesh of his friend in the siege and the straightness wherewith their enemies. They shall seek their lives and shall straighten them. Talks about a time of trouble like we've never seen. Daniel called it a time of trouble like it's never been on the earth. Jesus says it's the hour is coming when all are in their graves are going to come forth. And even Jesus, when he rose from the dead, just to give you a little prelude to this, to prove that there is a resurrection from the dead, the Bible says in Matthew, it says that when Jesus rose from the grave, that many bodies of the saints, in uh, Matthew 27, uh, says that many bodies of the saints were seen walking around in the city of Jerusalem. Let's just read that, Matthew 27, I believe it's around verse 52 or so, let's just see. Here's what the scripture says. Matthew 27, the Bible says about the resurrection, Christ has died, it's the third day, he's risen from the dead, and something happens. The Bible says right here, in verse 50, I'm in Matthew 27, 50, uh, Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and they came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many now these were the bodies of the saints you see you notice that the bodies of the sinners didn't get up when jesus got up because the bible says blessed are you have part in the first resurrection for the second death has no power over you so when if you're saved you're going to raise in the likeness of Jesus Christ, you're going to have a glorified body like Christ. How can we prove that? It happened when Jesus rose from the grave. Can you imagine in Jerusalem, when Christ rose from the dead, people were walking around Jerusalem, and they, all of a sudden they seen the bodies of people that they knew that were saints of God and said, I'm telling you, I saw Uncle Joe. He was walking around. He was fine. He was smiling. When this happened, I saw him on that first day of the week. I saw him on Sunday. Well, somebody else said they heard they saw Aunt May, okay? Someone else said they ran into somebody, and literally they, they couldn't believe it. What day it happened? The same day they say that Jesus rose from the grave. This was to also send a message to the unbelievers who were going to say Jesus never rose from the dead, but that his body had been stolen. But even the two uh, Roman soldiers who stood outside the tomb on the day that Christ rose from the dead, the Bible says that two angels came, mighty angels, and rolled back the stone. And, and the guards that were there fell like dead men because they were so afraid. Because you can imagine when these mighty angels came and, and they were there when Christ rose from the dead. So here's the good news. If you live for Jesus, you'll be part of the first resurrection. If you're alive when it happens, you'll be changed in the moment of a twinkling of an eye, and you'll be caught up forever to be with the Lord. You say, Pastor, how can you prove that's going to happen? Well, it already has happened. It happened to Enoch. He was translated. The Bible said he was caught up. He was translated because he was a friend of God. And we know that Elijah, we know the prophet Elijah was caught up in a chariots of fire, a whirlwind out of heaven. He went up to up and his mantle fell and the anointing came on the prophet Elisha. So we know we have proof that and Jesus rose people. He raised Lazarus from the dead after four days. Look, it's all red. And these two witnesses, we're going to tell you about them in just a minute. But they're also going to experience this incredible miracle, the power of the resurrection. But there's also a zombie awakening. The zombie awakening. Even Jesus Christ realized there would be a resurrection of the saints, but what about the resurrection of the damned? Hollywood has done a lot of damage deceiving the world. But according to the Bible, from Daniel's prophecies to Jesus Christ, there will be a resurrection of the damned, the zombie awakening. Get this DVD series today. Are you serious, Paul Begley? You just fried my mind in the last 12 minutes. That's fine. That's fine. Everybody, it's okay. Everybody calm down. But the Bible does, I mean, we don't like to think about 
judgment in a lot of ways. I remember these plays they used to do, Heaven's Gates, Hell's Flames. We go around to churches. We did them at our churches years ago. Nobody wants to talk about, nobody wants to think about the unthinkable, and that is, what if we were left behind? Uh, what if we were really left behind to see that and be a part of that because we weren't saved? That's not, that's not a good thought. So there's a better way, okay? Let's get this. There's a better way. Now, Jesus, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Let me tell you something. I was in Jerusalem in 1996. We were in it. We went to the Sea of Galilee with Dr. Lester Sumrall, and uh, we were taking a boat ride across the Sea of Galilee from Tiberias. Got in the middle of the beautiful Sea of Galilee where everybody was singing. There were so many people that went on this tour. There was three boats, uh, about 500 people. It was his last tour of his life. It was my first to Israel. He stopped all the boats and said, I want to preach. And he preached about Jesus walking on the water and calming the water. But then he said, do you see that mountain over there? That's where the demoniac of Kadera, that's where the man called Legion roamed among those ancient tombs. And he said, that man was naked and was possessed with a legion of demons. And he lived among the tombs because he ate the fresh flesh of the dead. And nobody could control him. He had superhuman strength, and nobody could control this man. He was demon-possessed until Jesus showed up, and then the man would come running and fell at the feet of Christ and, and said, Thou son of David, Jesus of Nazareth, thou son of David, as thou come to torment us before our time, the demons were speaking. And Jesus said, What is your name? And they said, Legion, for we are many. And then Jesus cast those demons out. And they went into 2,000 hogs that ran down the deep and jumped in the sea. And when Dr. Summerall was telling the story, I was standing, I was sitting in the boat visualizing this whole thing, saying, this is unbelievable. But then I began to realize something when the zombie apocalypse craze began. We began to hear of people running naked, people uh, biting and eating on other people. They had superhuman strength. They could not be contained. This is a phenomenon that's been going on now since the first man that they recorded it in Miami, Florida, did that by a man by the name of Rudy Eugene, who was so possessed that he ate 80% of a man's face off. Uh, and, and, was, and he had a Bible with him. And he was running naked through the streets of Miami. And, they, had, and they, had to, they shot him, and he just growled. And they had to shoot him six times before he died. Then we heard of the police officer in New Jersey. After 18 years serving his community, one Saturday morning got up, three Bibles in his squad car, drove to outside of an apartment complex of the elderly disabled, stripped down naked, got out of his car, left his Bibles open, got out of his car, went into the apartment complex and began to shove people and throw people and, th and dump them out of wheelchairs. And the police were called. And, and he was the captain of the police department. And when they got there, it took five men to wrestle him down. And he kept saying, I'm going to eat your children. And when they, they handcuffed him and they put him in the back of the squad car and they're taking him to the station and he kicks the back of the window out of the squad car and jumps out of a moving car, rolls down the street, gets up on his feet, still handcuffed. And it took, they had a taser him several times. Superhuman demon possession. What come upon this man? What type of demons are there loose? And then I said to myself, when I was reading these things, is that in the Bible? It's in the Bible. The legions, the demons, the bizarre, the wickedness, the spiritual witchcraft. And so I began to realize that can anything contain this? Can anything stop the spirit of darkness? And there is one answer, and his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And that nothing can penetrate the blood of the Lamb and the power of the Holy Ghost. And when you get Christ in your life, he won't give you the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. It doesn't matter what goes on. And then my wife tells me about this tribe in India that, that, that they eat the, the flesh of their uh, tribal members when they die. And then, then they cremate the bones and then they rub the ashes on their face and they pray to these idol gods. And, and she says, how can this go on? And I said, listen, you have to understand, we're living in the end times. We're living in the last days. And the Bible says they'll say evil is good and good is evil. 
So when Hollywood glorifies the zombie apocalypse, the zombie awakening, when they begin to glorify this darkness, we need to rebuke the spirit in the name of the Lord. We're to rebuke that demons from hell, and we're to reach out with the love of Jesus Christ to a world that's in trouble. Suicides, breaking all-time records, overdoses of, of opiates out off the charts, wars, rumors of wars, abductions of children, murder, madness, mayhem, meanness. It's taking place. Christ is coming soon. And the Bible said that the, that the souls who were, who were beheaded for the testimony of Jesus Christ are under the altar of God. And they're crying day and night, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which is, which was, and which is to come how long will thou not judge and avenge our blood upon the inhabitants of the earth you think the devil's going to get away with the darkness you think that the that the uh, that the beast kingdom in the book of revelation do you think the antichrist is going to win i'm here to tell you today that jesus christ will crush the devil the bible said he will destroy the devil with the brightness of his coming I was on the phone about, oh, I don't know, almost a year ago with Dr. Jack Van Impey. And he starts preaching to me on the phone. And he says, when Christ comes, he's coming back. He said, like lightning from the east to the west, so shall he come. The, the, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And he said, the Lord's going to destroy the devil with the brightness of his coming. There's no mistake about it, Paul. And he kept telling me, you got to tell the people to get saved. You got to tell the people we're in the last days. You got to tell the people that the end is near. Tell them that look at Jerusalem. Watch Jerusalem. It is God's prophetic timepiece. Soon they'll build the third temple. Soon the Antichrist will rise. Soon the world will come under a one world government. Soon the, the, the gospel will be, uh, be canceled. They'll try to stop us. They'll try to take our Bibles from us. They'll try to stop the word of God. Thank God for channels like this. Thank God for networks like this who allow the word of God to go out. But folks, soon the Bible says in the last days, there's going to come a famine in the land for not for bread and water, but for hearing the word of the Lord. I'm, I feel like a modern day John the Baptist, still crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord and make his path straight. We got to get people saved. You got to get washed in the blood. You got to get filled with the spirit of God. Let me just do this right now. I'm going to pray with somebody. Somebody's watching right now. So I'm going to do this right now, spontaneously. Somebody, several of you right now want to be saved. I want you to do this. You got to let go of the world. If you don't get rid of sin, sin's going to get rid of you. I'm going to pray with you right now. You ready? Let's, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I know that this man's telling me the truth. I know I've got sin in my life, and I want to get born again. I want to get washed in the blood. I want to be filled with the fire and the power of God. I'm tired of the chains of darkness. I'm tired of the deepness. I'm tired of the addiction. I'm tired of the pornography. I'm tired of the, of the wickedness in my soul. I'm tired of the things that Satan's trying to do to me. He's trying to destroy my life, destroy my family, destroy my home, destroy my business, destroy my career. I want to be born again, Lord. I want to repent of my sins, Lord. I want to get washed in the blood, Lord. So I'm, I'm asking you, Jesus, to forgive me, to cleanse me, to save me, to lead me out of this darkness. I don't want to be left behind, but I want to go when the king comes. I want to be caught up with the Lord. Rapture me out of here, Lord. I'm ready to go when you come. So right now, Lord, right now, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died on the cross and that he rose again. Save me, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And praise the Lord. Wow, are you serious? Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family of God. Every one of you just prayed. Look, I'll be right back in a moment to tell you more. Wow. The zombie awakening. Even Jesus Christ realized there would be a resurrection of the saints, but what about the resurrection of the damned? Hollywood has done a lot of damage deceiving the world. 
but according to the Bible, from Daniel's prophecies to Jesus Christ, there will be a resurrection of the damned, the zombie awakening. Get this DVD series today. Wow! Well, welcome to the family of God. I mean, the Holy Ghost just got a hold of us in here. I tell you, Jesus is so good. I'm telling you, be a part of the kingdom of God. And we're glad for every one of you to just give your life to Jesus Christ. You know something? We haven't done this ever, and, and we've been on for a long time now, but I'd like to ask if you could help me in something. We're going to put my address up on the screen right now, but I would like to know if you enjoy these programs... Or if there was some, you have some uh, suggestions of things you'd like to hear about, would you write me? Or maybe you have a prayer request that you, have, uh, that you really want me to pray about. We will take the time, and we do, to answer every letter that would come in. If you would write me and say, Pastor Paul, I really, would, I need encouragement sometimes just to know. And also, tell me what city are you watching us in? And what channel are you watching on? I really need to know that. I would like to know that who are being touched out there and, and, uh, and, and just I want to pray for your part of the country, your city that you're in, that you're watching this. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. And we will personally write you back and, and bless you and pray over the needs of your family, whatever it may be. I think this is a way for sometimes, you know, we just need to have a chance to have a tangible touch. Something about that. When I get that letter in the mail and my wife and I sit down, we start to open the mail. We start to read these letters every day and then pray over these needs. I really want to know. I, I can feel that anointing coming from you. And you may have some things. You may say, Pastor, I would wish you would change this a little bit. Or I, I kind of got an idea for you. I want to hear it, okay? Because I'll tell you what. Our goal here is to, be, to bring forth for you quality broadcasting on the Word of God, on the last days, the end times, biblical prophecy, but also our goal, and you got to know this, is winning people to Christ. You can always check out our YouTube channel, or you can always go to our website, find out about everything we are doing. I mean, our mission trips to India, our trips to Israel that you may want to go with us on tour. You would love to do that. Or maybe the conferences we're in, we speak in different places. But you know, I also would just like to get to meet you sometime. We're actually praying about doing a 50 uh, state revival across America. Heidi and I have been praying. We've even talked to Dr. Happy Caldwell about this in Little Rock, Arkansas, and he just about jumped through off his chair uh, at dinner one night and said, come to Little Rock and preach one of your messages here. I need to hear from you. Do you think that we could do, preach one night in all 50 states across America during a one-year period? Can I hear from you? Write me. Let me know what city you're in. 